tonight on The Magic of Jesus. We walk on water. I haven't stood there and seen it. I would have believed it. We'll be raising the dead. You've won a corpse. Ah! It's just freaking me out that it's just mad. We perform the impossible in Egypt. What curse it? Yes! And we're going to make a virgin pregnant. I've never seen it before, and I don't think I'll ever see it again. Everything is beautiful. And I'm Stuart. And we are the Two Magicians. About a year ago, we started to read the Bible. And were amazed by the descriptions of the miracles that Jesus did. We've used those miracles as the inspiration for our tricks. If you're as sharp as a really sharp sword that's very, very sharp, Ouch. then your eyes will notice that we never, ever use camera tricks to achieve any of our magic. All our tricks are witnessed by real people. Yes, real people. They're not mannequins, robots or puppets. This is the magic of Jesus! Walking on Water Introduced by Christian Evangelist Peter Gardner Matthew chapter 14, starting at verse 24 but the boat by this time was many furlongs distance from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. Excuse us. Hi. How are you? Look at us, we're better than turtles. We're two magicians. Do you want to see some magic? Yeah, it's super duper. Do you like spring tingling magic? Do you like beer? Do you like fish? Yes, and you'll get some do. free beer. Oh. Free beer? Yeah. You get some free beer? Yeah. Free beer? Yeah. All right. Yeah, then. Don't yeah, we'll that'll work. Work. Okay. Right. Well, off you go. Stay close. Follow us through this way. Come uh, on in. We said there was beer, and there is beer. Take a beer, go Have and sit beer. down. Mind the cameras and cables as you come in. Notice the clear tank of water in front of you. Nothing around the tank, apart from our cameras. All sitting down with a beer. Cheers, everyone. Yay! It's now time to walk in the water. I'm going to roll up my trousers. Ooh. Thanks. <laughs> Good. You and you go up the steps to the tank. You're going to check it out. Make sure there is a fish tank. You can touch it, you can have a good look at it. Make sure there's no hidden devices. Take the plank, put the plank in the water. Make sure that the water is wet. <laughs> is the water ice? No. Can you see any secret hidden shelves on that we could just put a piece of glass on and then walk on the piece of glass? No. No? no. Have a look at the fish. Are the fish real fish? Do you think that those fish would be strong enough to support a human on their back? <laughs> no, I don't think so, no. No. If you're both happy with a tank, if you think it is completely free of gimmickry, yeah. then go and sit back down. Yep. And you, you can take that plank with you. Think of it as a gift from me to you. <laughs> now we've had the tank checked, here's Stuart. You all right? Yeah. Oh man, it's freezing! Just get in. No, it really is. <laughs> okay. You ready? Yeah. Right, if you're gonna walk on water, you're gonna need your walking on water sticks to get up there. Here's one. I've set aside two beers. Two beers? You can have one of them if you make it from this end of the tank to that end of the tank, walking on the surface of the water. What do you think? I can try that. OK, if you don't, then you've gotten wet for nothing. Right, <laughs> on you go. I'm going to try and stand on the water first. Ready? Uh-huh. OK, here I go. <laughs> oh, 
I'm standing. Yes, but can you stand without the sticks? Give me one. All right, here's one. Right, okay. give me a second. Give me the other stick. Hold on. Okay, go. Ha! I'm doing it. I'm, I'm standing on water. Yes, you're standing on water. I've seen insects do that. Give the people what they came to see. All right. I'm going to walk on water. Ha! Oh, no oh, way. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm walking on water. How does it feel? It, it's like a strange, it's like a pricking sensation. <laughs> I'm a human boat. Just so that you lot don't think he's being held up by any wires, I'm going to take this bamboo pole and wave it over his head. You ready? Yeah, just mind my face. There we go. No wires. <laughs> right, it's time for the hoop now, Stuart. Yeah, buddy. Could you get the hoop? I'll get the hoop. Right. Take it. Thanks. Just going to pass the hoop over my slender body now. Ah! Hula hula! Oh, no <laughs> now, I'm going to walk on water some more. OK, you're halfway there. Can you make it all the way to the end? Come on! Have the beer ready. You promised it to me. Oh, yes! Yes! I've done it! I've walked on water! <laughs> Come on in! Have a look at the tank if you want. Come on. Bang it! Congratulations. Thank you. Nice one. <laughs> oh, thanks very much. I thought it would be some surface or something, like, you know, on the edge, so he could walk. But his feet was, like, like, quite in the water, but on the top at the same time, I couldn't... That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's going to walk on water. Oh, yeah, of course you're going to walk on water, but he did. And then it was just... I hadn't stood there and seen it. I would have believed it. It was just amazing. <laughs> Water to Wine, introduced by trainee vicar James Ogley. John chapter 2 says that the water jars each held between 80 and 120 litres. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. The master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. And he said, everyone brings out the choice wine at first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you've saved the best until now. Take me to a place on a plane. Imagine you were out lodging it with your mates. Massive! It's a great time, but you've run out of wine. Bummer. Boy, would it be good to make more out of water? Score! If you could do that, you could have wine flowing from your taps. Binge! Which is exactly what we're about to do now. Let's go and join in the fun. <laughs> We have been booked as the magical entertainment at this Christian wedding in Egypt. We're going to perform for them our version of the miracle, water into wine. Mary and Seward! Thank you. We all know that Jesus changed water into wine at a wedding. Well, we've get crash your wedding to do exactly the same thing. First, we'll need a receptacle, a drinking vessel. Rami, you're the groom. We'll use one of these vases. Point to any table. Okay, uh, this one. That okay. table there. Yeah. All right, let's go. First, uh, we'll get rid of these flowers. And as your eyes of Horus can see, it's completely empty. OK, we're going to fill it up with a bit of water. That should be enough. Yeah. We're going to change this water into wine. But unfortunately, we can't be as nice as Jesus was. No, the only way we know how to get anything done is by bullying. Water, change into wine or we'll hurt you. Yeah, we'll pour you in a toilet and then spit in you. It's worked. <laughs> yeah. Look, it sort of worked. Well, it's changed colour at least. Wow. Have a taste. Smell it. What does it smell like? Real wine. Taste, taste it. it. What does it taste like? What is it? Wine. It's wine. wine. Yeah. Yes! We've changed Woo! water into wine. Yeah! Drink yeah. and be merry, everyone. Yes! 
But we realise that not everyone likes wine. No. So just for you, we're going to take this beyond. I'll put in a bit more water into the vase. Okay. Right, quick. You. Yeah. What's your favourite drink? Mine is vodka with orange. Your vodka favourite drink? Orange. Yeah. Okay then. Water, change into vodka and orange, or we'll drown you! Yeah! <laughs> Smells different. <laughs> well, that's not water. Mmm, have a smell, have a taste. It's great. Taste it, what is it? It's vodka with orange. Vodka yeah. with orange! Yeah! Let's do it again. Yeah, do something else. Like um, uh, can we... This... Yeah, someone here? Here. Okay. here. Yeah. What's your favourite drink? What do you like to drink? Uh, coffee. 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 Black, black coffee. Non-alcoholic. No, no, no. Okay no, then. No milk. Mm, no milk. Okay. Okay. Water. Change into coffee, or we'll spill you on an uneven surface like a roof. Yeah. Uh, give me a glass. It smells it's different. Coffee in this. Ah. <laughs> That's quite warm. Is it burning? Is yeah. it hot? Be careful. Feel it. Is it hot? Yeah, it's very hot. Taste it. What is it? It's coffee. It's oh, coffee! Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> Again! Someone else! We've got you. Um, what about you? What's, what's your favourite drink? Beer. You beer? like beer? Yeah. Why okay. don't you bully the water? Say something nasty. Shout at it. Be beer, be beer, be beer. <laughs> OK. Does it work? You know what? It might just have. <laughs> it looks like it's worked. Have a taste. Yeah. Beer. 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 But wait! Everyone keep your bony eyes peeled! Because if we smash this vase, you'll see there's no mini bars, distilleries, or breweries. There's no technical shenanigans or wizardry inside at all! Look! Yes! Yes! yes. They took the water and took in the empty thing and changed it to wine, really. I tasted it and smelled it, so it was wine. They smashed the vase. It was amazing, there was nothing inside the vase. Coming up on the magic of Jesus, we make the blind see. This pal. <laughs> and get a virgin pregnant. I'm absolutely amazed. Whoa! Welcome back to the magic of Jesus. Yeah! Making the Blind See, introduced by Steve Foster, leader of alternative Christian group Holy Joes. The Bible says in John 9, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. He went his way therefore and washed and came seeing. We're on our way to meet Kirin. Kirin is totally blind. She lost her eyesight as a child. But today, we are going to use our magic to help her see again. Hello, Kirin. We are in Kirin's house. This is Kirin. Kirin has been blind since she was 11 years old. And she's decided to work with us in presenting our version of making the blind see. These fine people are Kieran's friends. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Uh, Sound you. a bit more excited, guys. <laughs> yeah. You, you look the most excited. Oh, yes. What's your name? Um, my name's Wei. Wei. Yeah. How do you know Kieran? Well, um, we all used to be in a dance group. So, how long have you two known each other? Oh, four, four years. years yeah. yeah. So, you know her quite well then? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, you would know that if we were to hold this eye chart up in front of Kieran, she couldn't see what was written on it. No. no. There's just no way that could be possible. <laughs> no, way. no. But using the power of our magic, Kieran will <laughs> be able to see the eye chart. Okay. You ready, Stuart? <laughs> yeah. You ready, Kieran? I think so. <laughs> now we've got to be quick. This won't last very long. Quick, the eye chart. Uh, you, could you just stand up? Yeah. 
We want you to point to any one of these rows of letters between one and ten. Don't just say it, just point right. to any one of the rows. Okay. <clears throat> okay, Kieran, what do you see? Uh, E-D-F-C-Z-P? Yeah, correct. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> now, you might be thinking that we just prearranged all of this and Kieran isn't seeing at all. Maybe we're giving her clues by the words we're saying. So this time, we will not say a word, nobody speak, no one make a sound. Let's do that again. Yeah, we won't speak. But this time, we want you to just point to any individual letter, okay? Right. Point to a letter now. We won't speak from now on. A. Correct. Yeah, point to another. P. Correct. <laughs> point to one more. Oh my God. Correct. <laughs> Phenomenal. No Thank you. <laughs> right, this won't last long, so let's try something else. You, could you just stand up and stand over here? What we stand want up. you to do is just think of any word, any word at all. Just think of one. Have you got one? Yes. Okay, great. I want you to write that word down on this pad of paper. But before you do that, we need to stand in front of Kieran so she can't see. Okay. As you write that word down, make sure that nobody here sees that word. And most importantly, do not let any of the cameras see the word you're writing down. Okay. Okay? Shall I write it now? Yes. So write it now. Go for it, Jamie. No complicated ones, because he's a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done that? Okay. okay. Hold the word, uh, the pad against your chest, so no one can see it. Yeah. Okay, now before you turn that pad round, you stand up. We want you to quickly check Kieran's ears. Make sure there are no hidden devices, there are no secret earpieces. Like the hair. <laughs> right. Nothing in there? You happy with that? Yep. Apart from okay. earwax? Thank you. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> now, in a moment, we want you to turn the pad round and show it to Kieran. You do that when I say now, okay? But when you turn it round, make sure that no one sees it. Make sure the cameras don't see it, and we're going to turn our backs so even we don't see it. Okay. Ready? Now. Gleaming. Correct. Is she right? right? Yeah. Show, the Show it to everyone. Show, Show the cameras. <laughs> Gleaming. Phenomenal. Thank you. Sit, sit back down. Awesome. <laughs> now, that's all very well, though. I mean, there are only 26 letters in the alphabet, and there are only 866,234 words in the English language. So that could have been a lucky guess. So this time, let's do something that's virtually unlimited. Yeah, uh, we'll use you this time. Stand up. What's your name? Um, Cotty. Cotty, come over here with Barry. I'm going to give you this red pen. Okay. What we want you to do is take the pen for a walk on this pad mm. of paper. Start anywhere you like and be as wobbly or as straight as you like. But make sure the line never crosses itself. Okay, okay off you go. <laughs> okay, that was pretty random. Uh, you happy with that? I oh, am. Yeah. Okay, sit back down. Look at that weirdness. <laughs> Kieran, I have a black pen here if you want to stand up. Cheers, thanks uh, for the prezzy. <laughs> <laughs> We're just over here. Cool. I'm going to put you in the start of the line, which is just there. Okay? Yes. You ready? Yep. Okay, do your thing. Um, guys, it's, it's, it's clouding. Can you put me back right, on the line? I'll put you back at the start of the line. Quick, you're gonna have to hurry. Okay. Okay. Uh, you're there. Okay. Um, for a few years now, and I know that she wouldn't be able to do that, so I'm really shocked. Just 
how? <laughs> <laughs> how she's obviously definitely blind, and I know that for sure, so you just, how? I know you can't see. I've <laughs> yeah. helped you read posts and so on as, as you yeah, have. Yeah, exactly. And clearly to do what you just did, you had to be able to see. And it doesn't make sense. I don't understand it. The Virgin Birth. Introduced by Father John Shannon, Roman Catholic, Dean of Norwich. This is taken from Luke chapter 1, verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Must be right at the end. Uh, uh, this way. All oh, right, cool. Hello, midwives. Hello, boys. <laughs> now we're going to make a non-pregnant woman pregnant. This is our non-pregnant magician's assistant, Jen. She's a virgin. This trick will be witnessed by this group of midwives who've taken a break from pulling placentas and cutting cords to watch us. We're going to need one of you to scan our assistant. Um. You. Do you know how to use an ultrasound machine? I do. Great. Then come up here and use your ultrasound machine. Come with us. Come on. This way. Now, before we decide anything, we want you to make some decisions. Um, first of all, do you want us to give her a girl or a boy? A boy. A baby boy. Second question. How many months pregnant should we make Jen? Five months. Five months pregnant? Can we do that, Stuart? Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. Now, quick as you can, we want you to scan her and make sure that she is sans baby. As you do that, you'll see that she's not wearing any prosthetics. You'll see that there's no makeup on her belly. And you'll see that there's no secret hidden concealed embryos. What do you see? I see her uterus, her womb. Uh -huh. She's not pregnant. She is not, not pregnant. pregnant. You can definitely say this woman has not got a baby in her. This woman does not have a baby in her. Watch Great. very closely with your beady little eyes. This shot will not cut away. Just sit yourself there and prepare your bones for the amazement that will follow. We just need to wear these special protective masks because the magic can get a bit strong and we don't want to get pregnant ourselves. No. Now there's this big light behind us that will cast Jen's shadow onto this cloth. I'm just going to switch on the light now. There you can see Jen's very non-pregnant shadow. Now, Barry, yeah. will this child be yours or mine? Uh, both, I think. Oh. Well, in which case, I'll look after it Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, OK? OK, and you'll look after it Tuesdays, Thursdays and weekends. All right, yeah. done. Now, your ankles can swell during pregnancy. How are your ankles feeling? They do ache a bit. Ah, good job you're barefoot then, isn't it? All right, now we're ready to make her pregnant using our magic wands. Let's cast the pregnancy spell. Oh, she's growing. One, One month, month, two months, months three, three months, months, four, four months, months, five, five months. months pregnant. Switch off the light now. And look, you can see, there she's she pregnant. is. She's pregnant. She's actually physically larger. Let everyone Let's go see get a scan Come this again. Way. Carefully does it. You're with child now. We want you to confirm that that's her real skin there. She's not wearing a prosthetic piece or anything like that, is she? No. Quick as you can, we want you to do another scan. That's it. You can see she's even physically larger there. Tell us what you're seeing. What is that? Baby. The baby? baby? The baby's head, the baby's spine. We've made a virgin pregnant! Yes. Awesome! This isn't just a video feed that we've got coming in. As you move it, it moves. It does. And you can even feel the baby with your hands inside. Can, yeah. Now, if you remember, we asked you two questions. One of the questions was, how many months should we make Jen pregnant? You said... Five months. We know can it's you... quite difficult, but can you tell? Can you guess how many months pregnant you think she might be? Yeah, she's about five months, but about... 20 weeks. <gasps> yeah. Great, but there was also a second question. If you wanted a girl or a boy, can you tell the sex of the child? Yeah, we've got little dangly bits. Dangly bits? A woolly? 
Lily. Really? It's a boy. <laughs> well, paint the walls blue. We got a boy. Right, you nutters. Come on, we're going to celebrate. Come over here. We're dads. When I first scanned her, she wasn't pregnant. When I scanned her again, after the boys had worked their magic on her, she was pregnant. She was having a baby boy. She was five months pregnant. And I'm absolutely amazed. There was definitely a pregnancy there. Don't know how it was done. Quite amazing. Knowing Ray and actually seeing what I've seen, I think I can only repeat what everyone else has said, that it isn't amazing. And if it's a trick, well, it's an excellent trick. Medically, it's not possible. I've never seen it before, and I don't think I'll ever see it again. Next on The Magic of Jesus, we resurrect the dead. <laughs> and shock the locals in Egypt. It's your mark, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. scratched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
this one, the one in the middle. Congratulations, you've won a corpse. <laughs> right then, let's take a look at what you've won. You love him, he's the perfect corpse. He's been dead for four days. He's ice cold, but best of all, he'll never argue with you because he's got no head. But you don't want to see that because your belly might be sick. Now, before we go, we need to do one more thing. And to do that, we need what's inside the box you've been carrying. You see, not only have you won this corpse, you've also won this matching head. <laughs> I think we should put it back where it belongs. Yeah, I think we should put it back on its rightful owner. Oh, it's so messy. But, um, the head goes on here, the, the spine goes on at the back, that's it, and the neck flap that uh, attaches at the front. Yeah, it really smells. Drop the box. Come here. Come here. Come here. We want oh. you to grab hold of hold of his hand just here. Feel his wrist. Can you feel a pulse? No. There's nothing there. Keep hold of his wrist. Whilst we do this. You can feel a pulse now. It's faint. Can you feel a pulse? Yeah. That's because his head's attached itself. The skin's just sewn up like knitting. <laughs> keep hold of his wrist. Yeah, just keep hold of it. Right now I'm in a lot, a lot of shock. It's just freaking me out that he's just mad. And when I felt the pulse, there was no pulse whatsoever. It, obviously there was no head when I looked at it. I could see like it looked like bone and whatnot where it had been detached and then they've put the head on. Oh, but I have no idea, no idea how that was just done. Catching the many fish. Introduced by gospel artist Adelaide Mackenzie. You see, Luke chapter 5, verse 5 and 6 says, Simon answered, Master, we've toiled all night, we're exhausted. But nevertheless, at your word, we shall cast down our nets. And when they did, it was full of fish and at the point of breaking. Hi, we're magicians, sacred. Yes. We do tricks like this. Look. Oh. <laughs> that is Arabshu, Arabshu. You know English? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You take us a ride on your oh, boat. Yeah, yeah. We have money. Oh, yeah. Okay. We'll show you some more yeah, tricks. Okay, okay. We'll show you some more magic. Yeah, Which one's okay. your boat? Yeah, this boat. This Can we go? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. let's go. These guys are real fishermen. They catch and kill fish every day. So if you're a bit squeamish, in a couple of minutes, we're going to ask you to look away. Okay, just stop anywhere you like and we'll show you a magic trick, okay? If you stop anywhere. Great. Where we're from, there used to be this ancient tradition where a fisherman would take out a silver coin from his pocket. Like this. He would then scratch his mark onto that coin. Like this. Then, to ensure himself a good catch, he would chuck that coin into the water. Like this. Now we're gonna need one of you to stand up and help us with this trick, as it will be in one shot. You, yeah. do you have any coins on you? Yeah. Yeah. Take out all your coins, come yeah. down here. Yeah, okay. We want you to take a silver coin from your pocket, any one. Yeah, okay? This. Okay, and take this file yeah. and scratch a mark into it. Okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. Scratch it. And once you've scratched it, let the camera see the mark. Okay. Hold it up so we can all see what you've done. Yeah. Now, to ensure a good catch, yeah. throw the coin in the water. 
Look, right. Okay, now stand right there. Okay. Do not move from that spot. We're going to yeah. cast your net over the right-hand side of the boat. Yeah. You can see your basket's empty, apart from the weight. Now, there's a good reason for casting the net on the right-hand side of the boat. Yes, there is. You see, in the Gospel of John in the New Testament, chapter 21, Jesus' disciples are having a terrible time trying to catch fish. They'd been fishing all night long and had caught nothing. In the morning, Jesus appeared to them and he said, Throw your net on the right-hand side of the boat, and then you will find some. And they did. They found loads. That's why we've cast the net over the right-hand side of the boat. That, combined with our lucky coin, should ensure us a great catch. How does it feel, Stuart? Ah! Ah! Barry, you'll never believe this! Is it heavy? Yeah, it's heavy! I think we've done it! Look! Ah, we've caught the many oh, fish! Yes. <laughs> but wait, another thing Jesus does is when he's asked to pay the temple tax, he tells his disciple Peter yeah. to go to the lake, to cast out his line, to take the first fish he catches, yeah. to open that fish up, and inside he would find a four drachma coin to pay the temple tax. Reach inside, oh. push the net. Reach inside and grab any fish. Yeah. Anyone you like? Is that yeah. the one you'd most like for your supper, is it? Looks, looks the like one a tasty you'd most one. like to eat. Right, you, have you got a knife? Right, we want you to prepare it for supper. Oh. Remember we mentioned the squeamish bit? Well, this is it. Look away now. Oh! oh. Have a look inside. What's the goal? Yeah. What's the goal? What's the goal? What's the goal? I should do it. Look inside. What's the goal? Inside you'll find a coin. Yeah. You find a coin? Can you yeah. see something? You found a coin oh. just oh. like Peter did. Oh. Have, have oh. a look, look at the coin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, look, look, it's what is your mark? Oh my god. Yeah. 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 Let him see, it's your mark, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You scratched yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very fish! Coming up on the magic of Jesus, we perform our biggest ever magic trick. And we amaze three wise men. Quick, get your mum, we're back! Feeding the 5,000. Introduced by Christian ska punk band, The Blunt Skulls. Luke 9, verse 16. Then he took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed them, and broke, and gave to the disciples to give to the multitude. And they did eat, and were all filled. Perhaps Jesus of Galilee's most famous miracle was feeding the 5,000. By the time he performed the miracle, he'd gained a bit of a following. One day, he turned around and saw that he had 5,000 people just staring at him in awe. They were all starving, and believe it or not, the closest McDonald's was half a mile away. But luckily, there was a small boy who had five small barley loaves and two small fish. Jesus gave thanks, then he distributed the loaves and fishes among the 5,000 rumbling bellies of his followers. Everyone ate and everyone was satisfied, except for two guys at the back that arrived late. We're gonna feed 5,000 people now. First, we'll need some loaves. But luckily, we've brought along our packed lunch with us. Now, although it looks all empty and unfulfilling, actually, inside here, just like that boy in the Bible, we've actually got... A loaf. Yeah, look, here is a baguette. Ooh la la. And, because we love them so much, another baguette. Now, I'm going to pull out of the bag a glass of water, just in case we get thirsty. Now, we've got our loaves, we need some fish. Watch our empty, magical hands. Keep your eyes on our tricky fingers. One. Two. Ah, oh. now we've got our loaves, we've got our fish. What will we need next? Mm. Ah, yes, 5,000 people! Yes! 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 Are you hungry? Yes! We're going to feed you all now! 
We've got this large picnic basket for large picnics. Inside, there's nothing, aside from some rather fetching gingham lining. All we need to do is give the box some magic taps. And now yeah. the box has filled itself with loaves and fishies. Yeah. Look at them all, yeah. Loaves and fishies. But well, that's not enough to feed you. That's only enough to feed what? 50? 50 of you. If you're not going to be fed, then you need to do it for yourselves. Because as the old saying goes, give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach a man how to produce fish by magic, and he'll eat for the rest of his life. We've distributed 100 of these very masculine baskets around the perimeter of the football pitch. And we're going to teach you hungry lot how to do this trick for yourselves. We'll start with you, come on. Everyone with a basket, watch carefully. You'll be doing this in a minute. You've got to feed the 50 people around you. The first thing you've got to do is show your basket empty. Look, you can see the basket is as empty as Stuart's head. Then pass your basket to your pawn sitting next to you. All right, pal. Thanks. Then give the basket three magic taps on its lid. And then show the camera that your basket's filled with loaves and fishes. Then pass out the loaves and fishes to everyone around you. That's it. Hand them back quick as you can. Now everyone pick up your baskets. Off you go. Yes. Off you go. Do it. Hurry up. Come on, show your baskets to the camera. Right, pass out your loaves and fishes. Come on. Come on, everyone. One and a half thousand so far. Two and a half thousand. We're halfway there. Keep it going, guys. That's three and a half thousand. Keep passing them. Come on, we're almost there. Everyone's got an open a fish. Stand up. Are you satisfied? Yes! We yes! did it! Five thousand people! Three Wise Men Introduced by Dom Anthony Such, Benedictine monk of Downside Abbey. St Matthew in his Gospel says, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy and fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Over there are three people that are going to help us with a magic trick. Now, they're all university lecturers, so they're going to be our three wise men, but they don't know that yet. Also down there are 54 people with paper bags on their heads. If you're watching on one of those new colour televisions, you'll notice the bags are brown, blue and white. You'll also notice that on each bag there's a different face. Some of the faces are happy, some are sad and some are surprised. Let's meet our wise men. Hello, hello, hello. 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 Hi. Uh, what's your name? My name is Pete Edwards. I'm professor in early modern British social history at the University of Roehampton. Wow. Uh, let me just ask you this thing. You haven't met Stuart and I before, and we haven't prearranged anything with you, have we? No, never met before, We've not prearranged anything. In a minute, we're going to ask you to use your professor's brain to choose from one of these three colours. You're going to decide which one you want to keep. You could keep white, blue, or brown. Which one are you keeping? Brown. He's keeping the brown. Great. He's decided to keep the brown. If you have a blue or a white bag on, take off your bag now and go. You have been eliminated. Mm. Now, Professor, as these people file past your face, I want you to look at their face and tell me, do you know any of these people? So many. No, I recognise none of them. None what? of them? None at all. Are they just strangers? Strangers, absolute strangers. Then don't talk to them. No, I shouldn't talk to strangers. Nope. That can be quite a dangerous thing to do. Mm, now, you've seen all the people you've eliminated. Let me just ask you one last time. Did you know or recognise any of those people? Recognise none of them. None of them? Great. Let's ask you something. What's your name? Hello, this is Dr. Val from the University of Hertfordshire. And what do you do at the University of uh, Hertfordshire? Uh, and I'm the Doctor of Environmental Engineering. Mm -hmm. Let me just ask you, you haven't met Stuart and myself before? No. And we no. haven't prearranged anything with no, you? No, no, no. Good. Now, there are only 18 people left. 
and they have different faces stenciled onto their bags. There are six smiling faces, six sad faces, and six surprised faces. You're going to choose at random which one of those emotions we're going to keep. Would you like the happy, surprised, or sad face? I like to keep the happy face. He's keeping the happy face. He's decided to keep the happy face. If you are sad or surprised, leave now. You can go. Take off your bags. You have been eliminated. Now, Doctor, yes. as these people pass you, yeah. look at their faces and tell right. me, do you know any of these people? No. Do you recognise any of them? No, I can't. Of course can't. you don't. It's just Joe Public, Nobby Nobody, Stanley Statistic. It's just Jerry Generic and Roddy Random, isn't it? We need one last decision to be made, and who better to make that decision than you? What's your name? Hi, I'm Peter Klapper from the University of Kent. And what do you do at the University I'm of Kent? I'm a lecturer in biochemistry. Now, we have to ask you, you haven't met us before today. No, I haven't. And we haven't just slipped you a fiver and told well, you what I, to say. Well, I wish you had, but <laughs> no, you haven't. No. And even if we had, we'd have just told you to say no anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're not going to ask you to choose a colour or a facial expression. In fact, there's nothing here to influence your brain at all. There's just six people standing all spread out. Let's get them to stand in a manageable row. Step forward into a line. And follow me down here. Let's take a closer look at them. This way. Mind your step. Just stand here. Stand right beside them there. And you're right there. Thank you. Six people. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now the decision is yours. Which number do you want to use? Number five. Number, number five. five. One, two, three, four, five. That's you. Everyone else, take off your bags. Now quickly, have a look at their faces. Do you recognise anyone? No, I don't. No one at no, all? No, no. You five can leave. You have been eliminated. You can see them close up as they leave. Look at their features on the plane that is the human face. Do you recognise anyone? No. No? No, don't. All strangers. All strangers. Between you, you have made completely random decisions that have eliminated a massive crowd of people, leaving just this one solitary soul. And those people that you've eliminated have just been random pedestrians, is that right? Yeah. But you've selected someone special because in the Bible there were three wise men that were guided by a star. And you are university lecturers. You're wise men. In fact, you're three wise men. And you've not been guided by a star, you've been guided to a star. Gentlemen, your decisions could have led to you ending up with anyone. But you found star of stage and screen, Richard oh. E. Grant. <laughs> Hello. I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. I didn't expect that at all. I did think of selecting blue at one time, but brown came to me, and uh, that was the right decision. It's absolutely fantastic. Well, that was the magic of Jesus, Barry. What next? Well, we've done the New Testament. Why not do the Old Testament next? That's a great idea. But what will we call it? We should call it Tricks from the Bible. Your strength just disappears from you. I've been smoked! Darkness! Coming Easter 2006, Tricks from the Bible.